Hey everyone, welcome to My Brush Choice. I'm Aniela, and in today's episode, I'm calling this Doc Talk. And we are going to be talking to my reconstructive breast surgeon, Dr. Christopher Lowe, with Vanguard Aesthetics Plastic Surgery. Um, and he's going to be telling us all kinds of stuff about which implants to you, or which implants he prefers, and all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to My Breast Choice. This is my amazing reconstructive breast surgeon, Dr. Christopher Lowe, um, with Vanguard Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. You can go to V A. PSFL.com um, to get a hold of them. But all right. So, Let's do it. Let's talk. Do it. Okay. So, my first question is um, What is the best time to involve a plastic surgeon if you are on, planning on getting a mastectomy? Like, let's say preventative yeah. first. Like, if you're doing a preventive mastectomy. I mean, I would see your plastic surgeon right away, um, just like you did. Because mm -hmm. you know, you, sometimes a plastic surgeon has good insight as far as which. Um, breast surgeons, which are the surgical oncologists, who's going to be the one removing the breast. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good idea to, to you know, do your research, ask around, and see as many, you know, plastic surgeons or physicians that, you know, can get a good recommendation for you. Um, now, when you have cancer, like all of a sudden, kind of yeah. stuff changes when you are diagnosed with cancer. Well, usually if you're with cancer, then what's going to happen is you're going to be seen first by your surgical oncologist, mm -hmm. your breast surgeon, and then that surgeon's going to refer you to a plastic surgeon. Okay. And that will be kind of, you know, his list of three or four go-to plastic surgeons that he uses. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, doing it prophylactically, then you kind of have the, you know, hey, I can kind of find my own plastic surgeon and then see who you who he uses a lot as a surgical oncologist and kind of go back and forth a little bit. Yeah. And um, just as a side note on this one, I actually, my um, my breast oncologist, like who took, removed my breast, um, I actually, uh, Dr. Lowe did not normally go to that hospital, but I actually want, wanted him so badly that I had them do special paperwork to bring him down. We took care of yeah, and so, so I want this man doing it. Yes. He's so good at it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, moving on. This is a question I get a lot of times: is um, silicone or saline, like for a mastectomy? Yeah, for breast reconstruction, I, I mostly use silicone. It just has a more natural feel to it, um, less chance of rippling. The saline essentially is a fluid where the silicone, one of these silicone gel implants, mm -hmm. is a little more solid. So much, much less chance that you're going to actually, not necessarily feel the implant, but see the implant and see, yeah. see the effects of rippling. So, you know, for, for a cosmetic case, for a cosmetic augmentation, you know, I think saline is okay. Um, but I think for, for most reconstructions, we've kind of pushed silicone for the most part. And yeah. it's just, it's safe. I mean, the way they make the implants now, I mean, they're much stronger. You don't really have to worry about a leak. I know that's the big scare is, yeah. you know, what if it leaks? Well, one, you would never know it leaks because your body forms kind of a capsule around it. So it's not something that we really are too concerned about. And, you know, with the newer generation implants, the gel is a little more cohesive. So you don't have to think, well, if you have a leak, is it going to leak all over your body? That's not going to happen. The gel kind of kind of maintains its shape and stays together. Yeah, and that one is like this the, is, yeah, that's these are the kind gummy. Of the, these are the newer ones, the gummy implants, if you want to call them, versus, you know, the older generation. Um, these are also shaped implants as well. These are the style 410s. And, and what that means is, as opposed to a round implant, um, I often use for reconstruction. I'll use a shaped implant, kind of a kind of a teardrop, which will give kind of a more natural look. Which a lot of you know, I find that with the breast cancer patients are looking for a more naturally reconstructed breast versus an augmented look. Mm -hmm. So kind of this has really been almost like my go-to flap or my go -to, my go-to implant for reconstruction. And that's what's in my the, boobs. Yeah, or those are my boobs. Those are yeah, the four tens. So and if you want to see my boobs. <laughs> Go to <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stuff out there. You can actually um, check out this video. Is my top five weird reasons I love my mastectomy, and I am topless in all of it. And you can see his amazing work um, of like you know what they look like afterwards. All right, awesome. Um, bras. Yes. Okay. So I don't, I don't wear one. You don't wear one, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I've talked to a lot of breast cancer. You know women who have like finished and they're like, oh, my favorite thing is I don't have to wear a bra. And they just had a mastectomy. Yeah. And I remember when yeah, I went I to you. Wear, I would wear one. I think it helps just to kind of support the tissue. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you're putting in a bigger implant, um, you know, the more support, the better, the less chance that the skin's going to stretch and thin out over time. So I advise to wearing them. Now, if it's a, you know, if it's a smaller implant or a smaller breast, there's not going to be too much stretch on on the skin, but for a, for a larger breasted, as you can imagine, you know, the more weight, the bigger the implant that we put in, the, the more the skin's going to stretch and the greater chance you're going to see rippling, or it's going to bottom out or drop over time. Yeah. So and, I, I advise it. And you had mentioned um, no underwire. 
Yeah, no underwire. Just the wire itself can irritate the skin. It can irritate the incision. Remember, we're going to have incisions on your breast, and you don't want the wire itself irritating that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And I actually, um, I'll put links for some places where you can get bras with no wire. Um, also, when you have surgery, you have to put the bra on in front, in yeah. front yeah. which is really hard to find. So I'll put links um, down below for you guys to find. All right. Next, I want to talk about expanders. So, expanders are used when a woman gets a mastectomy done, and there's that in-between period. Like, so why do they need yeah, an expander? Yeah, I mean, most patients do a. St I, you know, in my hands, I like doing a staged implant-based reconstruction. Um, there's different ways to reconstruct a breast. One is either implant-based versus autologous. Um, autologous is when you take the tissue, usually from the belly here, kind of your pooch, and use that to reconstruct a breast. I do those surgeries as well. That has to be done by a microsurgeon. They're longer surgeries, mm -hmm. um, but they're good surgeries kind of for, for a unilateral case for one side, because I think that the flap itself matches the, the non-cancerous uh, side, and over time, the, the flap kind of, they almost kind of settle together, mm -hmm. versus doing an implant on one side, and your natural breast on the other, the, natu the implant side tends to stay up high, whereas the other one kind of settles a little bit. Now the flap surgery is really only candidates for, for patients who have kind of a pooch. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, smaller or smaller frame women, they're really the only option is implant based. So in talking about implant based reconstruction, I usually do a staged reconstruction, which just means that, and it's immediate stage, which means at the time of the mastectomy, um, I come into the room when the mastectomy is done and then I put in a tissue expander. I put that underneath the pectoralis muscle and then at about two weeks or so I start expanding that up because we lose skin. If you think about it, a mastectomy most often they're, they're what's called skin sparing mastectomy so you still lose skin. So we have to get back that skin. So we can't just, um, you know, you can. There, there are times where you can go directly to a gel implant. Um, but that's usually on a patient who has larger breasts to begin with, where they have that, they have that. <laughs> I didn't have that. I didn't yeah, so, so most <laughs> often we, we have to put the tissue expander in first. Uh, we expand that up over the course of a couple months, and then in the next stage we take that tissue expander out and put in a gel implant. Mm -hmm. And I like the two-stage approach, because I think in that second stage it kind of allows me to get in there and kind of tweak things, and you know, if the tissue expander is sitting a little too far out, then I can fix it in that second stage mm -hmm. and, and kind of give a better shape to the breast. Yeah, and the second surgery is so yeah, easy. I mean, that's, so easy. Yeah, like yeah. I was, you know, laid up for a couple of days, but you're yeah. like you're home that day. Yeah, so. it's nothing like the first surgery. Remember, in the first surgery, you know, you're taking the breast, you have to lift the pec muscle, so you're just doing a lot more in the first surgery. The mm -hmm. second one is really I go through that same incision, take the tissue expander out, and put in a gel implant. And most often, if I do it on a Friday, a lot of patients are back to work by Monday or Tuesday. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, super yeah. easy. Our final question is nipples. Nipple reconstruction. Yeah, so some people save their nipples. Yeah, there are, um, you know, a lot of that I leave up to the breast surgeon too. I mean, a nipple sparing uh, mastectomy is is really a discussion you have with the with your surgical oncologist mm -hmm. and and you. Um, the plastic surgeon, if if they feel that the cancer is far enough away from the nipple and they feel that it can be done safely, then you know, we'll do a nipple sparing mastectomy and, and we'll not have to reconstruct the nipples. Um, the downside, it, it has to be for the right patient, it has to be smaller breast. If, if the nipple and the areolar complex are kind of sitting low already because it's a larger breast, it's hard to spare the nipple and get it, you know, directly in the, in the right spot. And then also you have to worry about just the, the viability of the blood supply to the nipple too. So for most often, the breast surgeons I work with, you know, maybe one out of the four does, does a fair amount of nipple sparing, the other ones don't do nipple sparing. So and remember, when you spare the nipple in the mastectomy, it's you know it's really for cosmetic purposes. It doesn't have any sensation to it. Um, it's really just uh, it's for for cosmetic it's reasons. It's decorative. It's decorative, yeah. But some <laughs> patients feel you know being able to spare the nipple for them is a, is an important process in the mastectomy. We've shown that too. I mean, there are some I think some benefits psychologically from walking out of the operation, having a mastectomy, and still having that nipple there. Like I said, it's, it's ultimately up to the breast surgeon whether they think it's a safe thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, to leave the nipple behind, whether the cancer is far enough from it. Um, and then the ways to reconstruct the nipple. Mm -hmm. um, so if, it, if it's not spared, the ways to reconstruct it, remember you have the nipple, which is the projection, and then you have the pigmented area as well. Mm -hmm. So what I classically do is if the skin isn't too thinned out from the expansion and they have a fair amount of subcutaneous soft tissue, I build the nipple first in the office just by making a, what's called a, a CV flap or or a um, or a skate flap. There, there's about a handful or ten different ways to build the nipple, but that's just one of the ways I do it in the office, where I, I build the projection and that stays projected. I let that heal over the course of you know a couple of weeks, and then once that's healed or a month or so, uh, that that patient then goes to a tattoo artist, or the tattoo artist comes to my office and that gets tattooed. 
the pigmentation. Mm -hmm. So the nipple gets built first and then the areola and the nipple get tattooed. Mm -hmm. The option which for you, you know, is using or what you opted for was, was yeah. the prosthetic ones if you want to show those. Oh yeah, yeah. These are I mainly like these because of the jokes I could do with them. <laughs> Of, yes. um, and there's also like 3D. Um, yeah, I guess I should have game. mentioned that too. So yeah. if the patient has really thin skin and they don't, and they're not a candidate to build that that projected nipple there, you can go to the tattoo artist. The tattoo artist come here and they'll just do the tattoo and the nipple as a three dimensional. Mm -hmm. So they'll make the nipple with, just with shading look like it's it's projected all the time. Mm -hmm. I think both of them. Yeah, I've seen know, them. I've seen the women's and they look really good. Yeah, it's like, patient preference. Yeah. Um, I can't do smiley faces if I have a nipple in the way, yeah. so I like having the scars. Yeah. <laughs> here. And I can't walk around downtown without a shirt on, yes. so I like not having them. But these are um, a silicone um, yep. prosthetic nipple, which are just <laughs> there we <very> go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is like made by Pink Perfect, and there's some other places too. But Pink Perfect looks really yeah, nice they too. do. Yeah, and they're custom made. Yeah. A lot of times, what you can do is you can actually send them a picture of the nipples before the surgery mm -hmm. if someone knows from the start that they just want a prosthetic and then they'll try to match it post-operatively yeah. with their existing nipple and, and the pigmentation. Yeah, no, really very cool product. Um, so it gives other options. Yeah, it's another option. Yeah. And then great Halloween costumes because you can have like get a couple of them and become like yeah. a cat. <laughs> <laughs> or a cow. <laughs> or a cow. Or any kind of animal that yeah. nurses. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think I think that's it. My only other question, my last question is, why are your fingers blue? Well, oh, from marking pictures. <laughs> and I'm partially a smurf. <laughs> I was like, are you up back there coloring? No, no, marking patients. Marking. <laughs> it just made me laugh. I was like watching you talk with your blue fingers. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. They're amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Lowe. Um, no problem. Fantastic doctor. And Ladies who are going through this, I know it's tough, but you will get through the other side and having a really great plastic surgeon helps. So shop around, ask for advice from other women who have done it, ask for references. Um, this guy is amazing, so if you're in the South Florida area or you decide to fly down, definitely go to him. Uh, his link will be in the description, but also it is vapsfl.com. Thank you. So, awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. Please subscribe to get all of the new videos that come out with more tips and updates and info for breast cancer patients. And if you want more of this stuff, I uh, blogged all of this. So you can go to my uh, breastchoiceshow.com to read the blog. And you can also help me make uh, my documentary on my, for my one woman show, which helps women and men go through cancer. Uh, you can go to gofundme.com backslash my breast choice to help give a donation to help us make that documentary. Also, I posted all of my cancer journey on Instagram at Danielle G and on Facebook at facebook.com backslash my breast choice. And I think that's kind of everything. Subscribe, guys. I mean, it's a fun little channel. So, subscribe. And if you are going through this, I know it is, it is tough. But there is a lot of help out there and joy, and you will get to the other side of this, all right? So just keep at it. Big hug, all of you. Big, big new boob hug. <laughs> and go enjoy your day.